The EU border is only a stone's throw from here. Those hills are a part of Romania and therefore part of the European Union. But we're in Moldova, on the poor side of the border. Blindesti is the first small village inside Moldova. A lot of the villages here seem frozen in time. But their idyllic appearance masks deep poverty. We meet three women at their work. We need this corn for the winter, for the animals, the pigs and the cows. We use it to make polenta and bread. It's our food for the winter. We get along here the best we can. Our husbands are away. We stay here and work in the fields. That's how it is in Moldova. We're very poor. There are hardly any men in the village. Life here is hard and unrewarding. People used to go to Romania for seasonal work, but Romania is now on the other side of the EU border. We're not allowed to cross the border without a visa. I used to go there at harvest time to pick fruit and work in the fields. Not anymore. There are only a few people who have a visa and can go over. The rest have to get through life as best they can. But that's not so easy. The village store belongs to a cooperative and stocks everything anyone could need here, from snow boots to cookies. But many people can't afford a lot of the products. At the village school, Principal Stanislav Fortuna does all he can to keep things going. There are nine grades, and students can even learn French. Foreign languages are in demand in Moldova. Many young people will eventually go abroad. If there were well-paid jobs available here, comparable to those abroad, young people would stay because this is their country. Their parents live here, their traditions and culture are here. He tells us that in the nearest city everyone has work, a miracle in poverty-stricken Moldova. That miracle is called Ungeni, or to be precise, the Ungeni Special Economic Area. Here, businesses don't pay taxes. That has already brought over 20 companies here, the principal says proudly. One of the companies is a joint venture between Moldova and Belgium. Every month, they weave 500,000 square meters of carpet. That's about 70 soccer fields. People are happy to be working, but their wages, equivalent to 150 euros a month, don't go far, even in Moldova. The pay isn't bad, but prices are high. It's hard to make ends meet. We just make the best of it, muddle through somehow. She doesn't want to say any more with the boss within earshot, but even a teacher in Moldova doesn't earn much more. It's an attractive country. After decades of communism, churches and monasteries are once again being renovated. The monastery Condrita has been decaying for decades, but now a group of monks are rebuilding it. It's a Herculean task because they live exclusively from donations and what they can produce themselves. Look what we've accomplished so far. We've built accommodations for the monks, the winter church is being renovated, and then we'll start on the summer church, with a hotel and a library still to come. We have many plans, and together with the people and God's help, we'll manage it.
Brother Sergio explained some of the special characteristics of the summer church to a group of tourists. For instance, that choir stalls are unusual in an Orthodox church. Brother Sergio has been here for nearly two years now. A surprising number of young people in Moldova decide to take up vows. This way of life can be hard. It's very strict. You have to suppress your own desires and be satisfied with the basic necessities. That's why there are a lot of young people who certainly have faith, but still give up after a time. They just can't cope with this kind of life. And who would want to work, study, and live with seven monks all in one cell? We've reached our ultimate destination, Kishno, the capital of Moldova. Here, the Soviet past is plain to see, and Russian is spoken along with Moldovan. A billboard in both languages advertises opportunities to emigrate to Canada. Here at the Fine Arts Academy, we've arranged to meet Zava. He's been studying drama and is about to graduate. They're rehearsing for the exam. The arts have had a hard time in a country that's not only poor, but also isolated. Unfortunately, here in Moldova, we hardly have the chance to see a decent performance from elsewhere. We only see our own productions. As students, we've had two chances to travel, once to Romania and once to Bratislava. In the evening at the pub, the conversation is all about the future, their own and Moldova's. So these students will no doubt seek their fortunes elsewhere.